Mead is an ancient drink of fermented honey that was prized notably by the upper classes of Scandinavia. Today it's making a comeback in mixology circles, written by Jim Austin. Here is a simple method for making a delicious semi-sweet mead which you can do in your own kitchen. Start by pre-warming the honey, which will make it easier to pour. You'll want it about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have access to a low temperature oven, you can use this or a water bath. Just make sure it doesn't overheat. While you're waiting for the honey to warm, clean your equipment. It's an important step to minimize the risk of spoilage. Starting with a 4-5 to five gallon stock pot, thoroughly scrub all your vessels and equipment that will contact the mead with hot water and unscented detergent. Then thoroughly rinse and clean. Scrub the carboy with a long carboy brush and soak it with hot detergent water to remove any residue of dried yeast from a previous fermentation. Carefully inspect all equipment for cleanliness and store it on a clean surface. To eliminate the vast majority of potentially harmful bacteria and wild yeast that could hijack your fermentation, the carboy and any gear used to fill and seal it must be sanitized. To do this, put 1.5 gallons of warm water in a clean 2 gallon plastic bucket and stir in 2 tablespoons of star sand. This will give you a dilute, sudsy, clear solution that will quickly kill any stray bacteria and yeast on contact. Pour 16 ounces of this solution into the spray bottle for spot sanitations. Then pour about half of what's left into the carboy using a funnel. Roll the star sand solution around the inside of the fermenter to wet the entire surface. Then drain it into the bucket for reuse. Rinse a piece of aluminum foil with the star sand solution and close it over the mouth of the carboy to keep out contamination until you're ready to brew. Weigh 15.75 pounds of spring water into the stock pot and then heat it to 120 degrees Fahrenheit on a stove. Meanwhile, weigh 7 pounds of the pre-warmed honey into a 4-quart mixing bowl. Turn the stove off and pour the honey into the stock pot, and then dip the mixing bowl into the pot to dissolve out all the traces of the honey. Stir until the honey is completely dissolved, using very gentle heat if necessary. Now, weigh out and add 8 grams of acid blend, 7 grams of yeast nutrient, and 5 grams of DAP. Stir until dissolved. The specific gravity of the batch should now be 1.100 to 1.105, which you can verify with a hygrometer if you wish. Recording this value, along with the amounts and descriptions of all the ingredients and temperatures used, will help you make progress as a mead maker. Set the covered carboy on the floor in a well-lit area. Shake off the funnel and use it along with the sanitized scoop to pour the honey water mixture into the carboy. Now add two and a half Camden tablets to sanitize the mixture from any wild yeast or bacteria. Take the carboy cap from the sanitizing solution, shake it off, and put it on the carboy. Thoroughly dry the carboy with a paper towel. Any moisture on the glass surface will make it very slippery and dangerous to carry. Set it in a dark, cool place that maintains a fairly even temperature between 60 and 65 degrees Fahrenheit. It must sit there for 24 hours to cool and let the sulfide from the Campton tablets dissipate. After the 24 hours is up, take the two packets of Lavlin D47 yeast out of the refrigerator and let them warm up to room temperature. Take off the carboy cap, cut the tops off the yeast packets, and slowly pour the yeast into the carboy, where it will dissolve over the next few hours. Within 24 to 48 hours, the batch should start bubbling, showing that the fermentation has started. This primary fermentation will continue for about one month until the yeast action is slowed considerably. After four weeks, it's a good practice to rack the mead into another sanitized carboy to separate it from the bulk of the yeast sediment, which could break down and harm the flavor of the mead in the long run. When the mead has finished its secondary fermentation and becomes still, the yeast will settle out, leaving it quite clear. Finally agitating the mead to mix it thoroughly, without waiting, siphon the 2.4 gallons of mead into sanitized bottles and cap them off. Now amaze your friends and family with this unique, delicious, and historical drink. By carefully logging your procedure, you can develop your techniques for better and more varied meads. It's worth starting with your first batch, 